Hello and welcome to this new hands-on SAP Dev episode. I'm Mario Sobert and today I want to show you or try a new format here. The topic will be based on a blog post that I've written earlier this year and I'll try to keep the video under 10 minutes so that it's easy con to consume in coffee breaks or when you're on your way uh, from or to the office. This uh, short video will focus on the live demo only and therefore I'll only talk about an absolute minimum of required background knowledge and background information. I recommend reading the blog post if you want to learn more about the background. And for this episode, I picked the following blog post that we see here, using Postman for API testing. It is a relatively long blog post if you compare it to other blog posts of mine, but as I said, I'll only focus on the important parts. And the important part is, as the name suggests, how to use Postman for API testing. Um, basically, when you want to test APIs in a microservice application, you have to be aware that each microservice guards its resources individually. So you have to have a so-called token to access the resources. If you don't have the token, which is called JWT token here, JWT is pronounced JWT, um, then the access or the, the request will be denied. And if you have a valid token, the resource server, which is a microservice, will provide you access to the resource. It could be a CUP, a CUP server that provides you access to the OData entities, could be the HTML5 application repository service to provide you access to the web apps, or it could be uh, any third-party applications or applications you have written yourself on SAP Cloud Platform. So for all these access operations or access requests, you need a chat token. In case you wonder how this token is issued, um, have a look at the blog post, or if you prefer videos, there's this playlist by my dear colleague, uh, uh, Teacher Adams, OAuth 2.0 on SAP Cloud Platform Deep Dive. There are currently eight videos of about one hour uh, length each. And so there's a lot of content for you to understand OAuth better and to see what you can use it for. For now, you just need to know it's a token that looks like this token here. It's a little bit cryptic, but when it's encoded, when it's decoded, it consists of a header and a payload. The header describes the, um, the algorithms that are used to um, encode it and to assign it. And the payload contains the information our application uh, resource server is looking for. So information about the user that is logged in. Each user has its own uh, token. Even like machines can be users in this case. And what is also important is the scope that defines the name of the application and a uh, role or permission. So here, my application name is Live Demo. It has a unique ID. And then my user has the scope creator. That means when I come to a microservice of this Live Demo application, I'm allowed to create new uh, resources, but I maybe would not be allowed to delete them. So now you wonder, okay, if anyone could change something here, why is that secure? How is that secure? And for that, there's this last section that defines the signature. So when I uh, don't have anything here or just add random values, this token has an invalid signature. So the resource server could deny the request because the token is invalid. But if you enter the public key of the uh, service that issued the token, what I've just pasted in here, you see the signature is verified and now our application server knows that this request can be granted and the data can be exposed. Okay, so much for the theory. As I said, I want to keep it short. Let's have a look at, uh, at a sample application that does exactly what I just described. So I have wrote this very short application here. It is a uh, web server based on Express and Passport. And it has only like 34 lines of code, including comments and spaces. So let's go through the code for a second. Here in the uh, import or require section, you see I require Express because it will be a Express application, Passport to uh, enforce authentication, uh, access security, the access sec package from SAP to uh, import our chat token strategy that we can combine with Passport later, and access env to import uh, variables from a file that would usually be a uh, bound services in the cloud environment. But you will see later what it's for. In the line 7, I uh, define or initialize the Express server. Then I load the environment variables that I will mention shortly. And then first I want to add a public endpoint. 
here I just say okay under root serve hello world that's uh, probably what you've seen in other uh, Express applications as well and now the interesting part starts I initialize the passport strategy for that I uh, passport uses this shot strategy that is defined uh, or has been required up here and we pass in information from the access UAA server or access UAA service into the strategy and then we initialize it and we say okay authenticate the chat token or with it require authentication based on chat tokens and then we add two more uh, endpoints but now they will be protected because we define them after the passport strategy has been initialized here uh, we have one request that just returns user information that is included in the chat token because starting from here we can expect that the chat token uh, is present and it has been passed and here we have another endpoint that we could use to check if our user has a certain scope and then we just start a web server so first the first thing we need to do is we need to start an access UAA instance or create one with the Cloud Foundry CLI and then we uh, add it to this local uh, environment variables file that will be imported in the step here so first let's create a new service for that I execute these two commands so here I create new service and based on this file and then I create a service key so this is the file that's based on here you see the live demo application that we've seen previously I defined two scopes one admin one creator scope and that's all we need to do, but we can also define role templates and role collections that will make it easier to assign the scope to users in the SAP Cloud Platform cockpit later. But all we need to, all that's absolutely necessary is this, and these two sections down here will just save us some work uh, later on. We see that the services have been created here, both the service and the service key. So now we can print the service key with this command here. Let's make that a little bit larger. And paste it in default nth and here. And um, yeah, that's all we need to do. Now we can start the server, node server.js. And let's switch back to the website here, localhost think 4000 and we get hello world but if we try to access user we get unauthorized because obviously our browser does not attach the chat token in order to uh, be able to access the page we need to assign the role collection to a user for that we go to the SAP cloud platform cockpit when we refresh it here we see that uh, the service has been provisioned in the cloud foundry environment so that's what we've done with the CF create service command in a, a few seconds ago so we see the service here if I go to role collections we see that I have a role collection that is called creator here with the, based on the creator role template and I see an admin based on the admin role template so now we can go to the trust configuration and I enter my email address And I assign this new role collection admin to this email address. I enter a second email address. And I also assign uh, the second role collection to the second user. So we see a difference later. But this is all we had to do to prepare everything. And now we can switch to Postman to test if, it, if it's working. So here uh, we see uh, there is this, let's turn authentication off first. I can send the same request that we sent earlier and now we get unauthorized. But now we can use Postman to add an authorization header. For that we select of 2.0, we select get new access token. And here we enter uh, information that we've, uh, that have been provided when we created the service key. So when we go back to the service key, we see that we have uh, 
different parameters or properties and values here. For example, this uh, the verification key, the public key that I mentioned previously, the name of the application, or we also see the uh, URL. Sorry, it's down here. The URL of the UAA domain. So if we take the proper value and copy them, copy them from here over to Postman, and that's described in the blog post which value you have to copy where, you can basically request chat tokens directly from the Postman and then attach them to the request. So I entered all the values here with my email address. I only request the scope creator. I click request token and I get a token here. I click use token and when I send this now, I basically here retrieve all the information from my user. I could do it uh, the same with like I can now access the second URL, this uh, check scope, and add a header for a scope. Uh, do I have this creator scope? Then it will say true, but if I say do I have the admin scope, it will say false because this user here doesn't have the admin scope. Let's go back to the authorization tab to um, to log in with the other user which has that scope. So I can once again select uh, get new access token, change the email address here, and request the other scope for admin as well. Request the token, have the token here, select use token, and when I now send this request again, it is true because the second user with the second access token has the scope and that user is allowed to perform more actions on your application. And again, when I say uh, get user information, here I see the, still the same name but a different ID because this is a different uh, user. I hope you uh, enjoyed this short video. I hope it was helpful. Uh, one disclaimer that I often get asked is um, does this work with any IDP? Because now we, I did a demo in the trial environment. We used the default SAP ID service of SAP Cloud Platform. And with that, it works great. But um, depending on which custom or corporate IDP you use, this approach might not work because of the IDP that is connected to SAP Cloud Platform. That could happen, for example, up to on SAML-based IDPs. So before you try this, um, I recommend that you check if your IDP supports this flow. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this new format. I'd be also very interested if you like the format, if you think 10 minutes is too, still too long, if it could be a little bit more content, and also if you found this video because of the blog post, or if you found the blog post because of the video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.